Hello, welcome again to Keyjunkers TV and a new video. Today we're going to explore the Cork OP6. The Cork OP6 is a desktop FM synthesizer. We will go over its functionality briefly in this video and then proceed to try out if it's really possible to make nice sounds with it by yourself. In our other video about the OP6, we have already showed you how the presets sound, but today the focus is on the synth engine itself. Also, you can stay informed about all our videos by subscribing to our channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video and then you can hit the bell button to get notifications when there is something new on our channel. First, uh, let's go over the functions of the OP6 briefly. This is a 6 operator FM synthesizer and it is related to the famous DX7 by Yamaha, which determined the synth sound of at least the second half of the 1980s. So what uh, makes FM so special? The idea is that all natural sounds are in fact complex waveforms that vary over time. And this shapes the final sound and how we perceive it. Acoustic instruments have a bass tone on which additional frequencies are added or subtracted and by varying them over time you can create a characteristic sound that we recognize as for example a flute, piano, violin, etc. The idea behind FM is that by modulating the bass frequencies you can shape an electronic sound so it becomes a recognizable instrument. But also it enables you to make the most crazy sounds possible. So the OP6, as the name implies, has six operators. Uh, these are the base waveforms. The algorithms describe the way they interact with each other. So a waveform can go to the audio output or it can be used to modulate another of the six waveforms to create extra harmonics. The result can also be fed back into the same operator or into another one. And by combining all these you can shape a total sound. Now this already sounds quite complex and FM synthesis is notorious for being abstract and hard to program because of that. It also uh, did not help that the DX7 and many other FM synths uh, made in that time did not have any visuals to show you what's going on or did not have any knobs to turn to try out what happens if you make changes. Now, Korg has really tried very hard to change this with the OP6 to make it possible to understand the sound and manipulate it in a way that makes sense and gives good results. The core of that are the six sliders and knobs that form the operator mixer. So how does that work? Uh, we have two colors here and we have the six operators and the red light indicates that this operator is going to an output. So when I play the keyboard and open the slider, we can hear the volume increases. The same in this case goes for OP2. And with the knobs, you can define, define the course ratio. The purple light indicates that this operator does not go to an output, but it's, um, it is an uh, modulation parameter for the other operators. So let's hear what happens if we push this uh, slider up. So we can clearly hear that this operator manipulates these two. Let's uh, pull up the other sliders and see what, uh, what we hear. So 
So they have really um, made the, with this panel a clear way of showing what the operators do and how they can be influenced uh, by just uh, pulling up the sliders or uh, turning on the knobs. But of course, the OP6 has many more features. Uh, Cork has made a sections for each of them, so let's go over them. First, we have the algorithm. As we can see in the display here, uh, this is the algorithm currently used. And it can be easily uh, changed by uh, turning one of these knobs. So the display always gives you information where you are and the right side gives you an indicator of what the encoders will do when you turn them. So in this case we have algorithm 21 and we can change it. Like this. Uh, furthermore, there's a general attack and decay here. Uh, and the knobs determine the settings for the chorus, delay, and shimmer reverb in this case. This mode, operators, gives you an insight on uh, each of the operators and what they do. And as there are six, you can uh, choose each one of them by pressing plus or minus on the op select buttons. For each operator, you can choose the base waveform, you can choose what kind of mode it is in, and the depth and the shape. Well, the mode uh, deserves some extra explanation. Um, originally, in the DX7, you only had FM mode, but the OP6 also offers a ring modulator, filter, filter FM, and a wave folder to, uh, to manipulate uh, the operators. Uh, to remember all this, they are laid out here on top of the synth, so you can always uh, remember um, that there are many different ways to manipulate an operator. Well, this of course, uh, creates a crazy amount of uh, options um, and it will sound completely different when you choose one of the other um, um, manipulators for the operator. Um, but that's not all. There's another section here which um, gives you different choices for the basic waveform. So if I turn everything down, so we hear only operator one and we change the waveform, Let me correct that. I have to go to operator 1 and change the waveform. And one of the waveforms possible is a sine 12 bit, which resembles the the kind of uh, sine wave that the original FM uh, synthesis of the DX7 made. And uh, let me just hear, let's just hear what, what happens when I change the, uh, the mode of, um, of operation. Let's choose a saw to it so we can hear it better. Besides the mode for the operators, there's also um, a, a special pitch section. Here you can uh, select for each of the operators how the, how the pitch ratio will, will be like. So let's see what happens. And 
Again, this uh, can be done for each of the six uh, operators. Then we have the level and EG section, and again, each of the operators can have its own attack decay sustain release uh, envelope, as well as um, key tracking and um, manipulation by, for instance, LFOs. <laughs> Then uh, we have three different processor sections. Uh, first, there's the modulation section. Um, all the um, set modulations are shown here. So we have uh, envelope generator one that goes to pitch, envelope generator two that goes to filter, envelope generator three that can be freely used. And then there are uh, several LFOs that you can also uh, use to manip manipulate various functions. Um, if I use the shift button, I go to virtual patch and this gives me um, a modulation matrix for additional modulation. And you can choose any kind of source here, um, even a MIDI source, uh, a MIDI controller can be used as a source. And there are the destinations and the amount of manipulation that they get. Um, moving on, uh, there's a filter section. So there are many different filter types. Of course, they are all digital, but uh, Korg has um, has implemented these in some of their other machines as well. So there's the famous MS20 filter. There's a Poly6 filter. High pass, uh, 24 and 12 dB high pass, another band, so various bandpass filters. Um, so, lots of choice here, and to me, well, this is not the best section of the OP6 because they all sound like filters, but they don't really add to the character of the sound. And also, I think FM synthesis by itself doesn't really need. A filter section because you by manipulating the different operators you can create um, rich harmonics or not uh, as you choose so but it's a nice addition and it's good that they uh, implemented it well then we have the uh, effect section here um, again there are many different effects there are th three uh, effects uh, that you can add to a sound uh, fx1 fx2 fx3 as we can see here and in this case there's a chorus as fx1 you can choose any other kind that you uh, that you might prefer and add them like this then there's the level Reverb time in this case. And in this case on FX3 there's a shimmer verb. Which you can also change of course. Uh, for instance make it a, a grain shifter which is kind of a granular effect. Which is quite nice and it's also tempo controlled. So for sound design, uh, this section together with the operators and processors functions gives you uh, an easy way to edit all the sounds that you like and uh, it gives you a clear insight in how the FM part of that works. Now the OP6 also has a, a, a arpeggiator and a sequencer section. Um, I'll quickly show you um, how they more or less work. Um, there's an arpeggiator here. You can put the switch on and just start playing. Right, let's just take another preset for that. Let's see what happens.
and that is also a sequencer and you can see it, all the tracks here and it can also be edited in real time let's see what's in there we can also uh, select the steps to clear the sequence for instance like this so it sounds a little bit different Now it's set to one half resolution. We can also uh, make it quite a lot faster, like this. Or we can just record our own sequence by uh, pressing the different steps and it's polyphonic, so we can do it like this. Play. The nice thing about the sequencer is that it can also record uh, any of the parameters here. Um, you just press uh, record and then uh, turn the parameter that you uh, want to add, like this. <laughs> For instance, when I would like to add um, resonance as well, I can just turn it up. Very easy, uh, very nice, and also uh, you can go to the sequencer section to see what, uh, what you have done, and uh, you can even edit it. Of course, it can be synchronized to MIDI. It ha also has USB MIDI. So, all kinds of possibilities here. The OP6 has many presets, uh, and in the range of 226 to 250, there are basic templates. You can select uh, one of them as a start for making your own sounds. So, let's pick one and try to make a sound with it. I have not prepared this, so we have to experience here what it is like to make your own sounds, uh, given all the options that we have here. Let's give it a try. Uh, first, we uh, select a program. We'll scroll to the template section here. And um, what do we have? We have detuned sign, saw, unison, chord hit. Okay, let's um, pick, for instance, wave folder. Why not? So let's see what uh, what we have here. When you look at the algorithm, we can see it's algorithm 34, and um, it's basically one, two, and three go uh, only operate the one goes to the output, and all the rest is manipulating uh, the uh, operator one. So you can hear that by changing the levels let me quickly um, program a sequence so we set it to maybe one fourth and we just put in some chords and we let it play as we edit the sound.
change the algorithm and see what happens. I like this one. Let's change some of the envelope levels. Finally, let's add some effects. Uh, reverb sounds nice. Let's enable that. Let's see what else we have. We have a chorus that might be nice on this sound as well. find a different effect, maybe uh, um, some kind of delay here. Let's see what happens. Use the appreciator. Let me program a sequence with this. Maybe add some filter, motion. Let's 
It is also uh, possible to load the X7 sounds in the OP6. And we have done that uh, via a system exclusive message that sent a bank of sounds uh, via USB MIDI to the OP6. Uh, let's select a sound from that to edit it and maybe add some of the extra features that the OP6 uh, offers to create a new sound from it. So we have some DX7 sounds here. I like this uh, bell bass. So when I choose it, you can uh, see if I go to mode that the, uh, for all the operators, the waveform is set to sinus 12 bit. This is because this is the uh, original sine wave uh, format that the DX7 used. So let's um, try to change uh, some of these to uh, uh, specific waveforms that the OP6 has to offer and see what happens to the sound. Uh, let me just put in um, like a, a small sequence here so we can have that uh, playing while we do the editing. Check out operator 1 and change the waveform. something different for this one. Go to operator 3. Ah, why not? Let's check out some of the other operators, what they do. Very nice, typical FM sound. Let's try to do something with operator 5. Maybe change the mode, the ring. Maybe do something with the filter here. Maybe add a little distortion. See if we have that. Bit crusher. And maybe a little reverb. Uh, choose a smaller reverb here. Let's see, chamber. So it's really easy to uh, manipulate existing sounds or for example the DX7 and turn them, turn them into something completely new.
So, what do we think of the OP6? Korg has really done a good job on making FM synthesis accessible, I think. The sliders are a brilliant way of uh, giving easy access to the core of the sound. Also, the way they created the different sections of editing options is very nice and simple, easy to remember. And it comes with a very good effect section too, and a very usable sequencer with parameter recording. Uh, the least impressive I found the digital filters, and the keyboard is only uh, three octaves wide and does not have a very playable feel to it. Um, it kind of makes you wish for a rack or desktop module or a bigger version uh, of the OP6 with a good five octave keyboard, for example. Besides that, the OP6 is a very nice sounding, very fun synthesizer with a very good value for money. Well, thank you for watching. Did you enjoy our video? Then please give us a thumbs up. And also don't forget that you can subscribe to our channel if you want to see all our videos. Thank you and see you next time.